Hey everyone, hope you're doing very well, very well. So, I'm going to do this video on taking your eBay planes or car boot sale planes, whatever, and getting them set up. We're going to focus on the number four. Now, a quick word before we start on the equipment that I've got. So, it seemed to me that um, buying an expensive granite reference plate for working with relatively cheap tools was not going to be the best way to go about it. So what I did was I went into a local tile supply shop with my Starrett ruler which belonged to my combination square and a feeler gauge which matches the modern tolerances that planes are made to. Now I believe that's about 1.5 thousandths of an inch and I think that equates to about 0.04 of a millimeter. So looking at the tiles in the shop I found that the ones that gave me the most reliable results were these style which is it's the same material all the way through and this has got some lovely sparkles in it that won't aid performance and it gives it a slightly Tony Montana look but I don't really care as long as it does the job and all I did was just in the shop took my straight edge which obviously isn't very long but we're only dealing with a smoother so that's not a problem and Offered it up, went across and tried the feeler gauge underneath, seeing if I could get it to go underneath anywhere. Okay, there's little areas where it nearly catches, but it was it was fine. I also held it up to the light and looked at it, and even looked down the length of it, and it was fine. Yeah, like the porcelain style, where it's like a like almost like a terracotta -y kind of thing with a coating over it. I found those were quite distorted, and I wouldn't recommend those. So when it comes to securing this down. Don't clamp this down. Make sure that whatever you're resting it on is pretty flat, okay? And all I'm using is two clamps at either end to stop the tile moving around uncontrollably. And if we need to flatten the plane soles, what we're gonna be doing is moving forwards and backwards and pushing it through over the abrasive and letting the abrasive cut rather than push down into it. So I've got my self-adhesive backed abrasive as well, and we might end up changing this as we go. Um, I'll put a link to what I've used here. I favor this approach over using um, loose abrasive um, or loose paper abrasive that doesn't have an adhesive on it and then sticking it down and taking it off. It's just quick and very convenient. That's pretty much the main thing. I mean, you're gonna need your sharpening stone. And if you've seen a few of my videos, you know I like the Norton India. And actually, I've um, used my vintage one that I picked up for like a quid the other day, just to show that it can be really basic. Um, a honing guide as well, that's gonna be useful, mainly because the plane lines are probably gonna be one of the things that we might find difficulty with. But yeah, let's, let's stop talking and let's do something. So there's a few blemishes on the packaging here and that's what I've just cut off address labels for because I don't think it was fair to show where these were either coming from or going to. This is obviously a typical eBay packaging. And if you do have any questions about the process and you think well, I've not covered it particularly well, do feel free to leave any other questions and I'll do my best to answer you. And my motivation for doing this is really, it's not that I have any kind of problem with um, say, the quality planes that you can get from modern makers. It's more the case of I wanted to have an option of um, using good second-hand planes so you can save your money for lots of other planes. Now actually what I'm gonna do is, this is a four and a half, lovely plane, didn't know what was in that box. Um, so I'm gonna shift that one out and try another one and see hopefully we've got a number four because the number four is quicker and easier to work on. I bought all of these a little while ago. I think it was sort of end of 2021. I had another plan for them, but that never really happened. So I'm just as happy to get them all going and then just ship them off for someone who might find them useful. So much so I can't even remember what's in some of these boxes as you saw with that four and a half. So this is a standing number four in its original box, which is pretty cool. Obviously being cardboard, it's um, not an amazing situation. Okay, so that's, that's nice. That's in good order. All up together. And I would say from my personal preference, 
this is what I would say is when Stanley made their best planes and a lot of people into their pre-World War II stuff but for me this is the absolute best. So let's get rid of that bit of packaging. And you'll see even when people buy brand new planes they often need a little bit of work so let's just see what we've got going on with this one. So what I'm going to look at straight away is here in the back and we'll try and get you a bit closer is look at the frog. What we're going to look for is making sure that casting of the frog is level with the back of the mouth. In my opinion once that's leveled you'll never need to move it and you'll be able to do that by feeling with your fingertips because your fingertips are so sensitive. Okay and I can feel that slightly forward really wouldn't matter but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to slacken that and make it dead flush okay and you've got a couple of screws in there just slacken those off you don't have to take them all the way out and there's a screw here in the back the big one just underneath the depth adjuster wheel that one there all we need to do is to gently wind that one back and use your fingers because your fingers can sense so much there's probably a little bit of play on things as well just get it nicely positioned if there's a slight step there don't worry it's just more the case that the reality is once this is set you won't need to do it now especially if a plane looks this clean I'm not even going to go there looking for problems a lot of people assume there's going to be problems they think they can make a better job of it but they can't. Here's another reason why I like um, this age of Stanley planes is that certainly on a lot of the modern planes this is like a fabricated piece whereas this piece is done all in one hit and the fabricated ones have a couple of screws that goes into a brass adjuster or a brass tab and I've seen them getting loose but there's no way that's going to get loose because that's all one solid piece and I think that's excellent that's a real real plus point. So the most important bit really is to take a look at this cutting iron see what we're up against and this is just luck I haven't opened this one up what I've got with that one is just a decent ground bevel on there so we've just got lucky with this first one that's unusual okay all I'm going to do with that one is look to hone it it looks like there's a little bit of a wear bevel on the back and by what I mean by saying that is it looks like the back edge of it is just showing a bit of polish back the other way but we'll see what we can do with that. So what I'm going to do is bring you over here and we'll just look to do the classic razor burr, remove a burr, add a bit of polish. I don't know how many of these planes will do. I'm just going to do a few and see where we get to. Excuse me. Now because I've got that ground bevel I don't have to worry about using a honing guide. So all I'm going to do make sure is I've got some good oil on there. Feel for that bevel. Lift slightly. And just do my normal honing routine and I'm going to hone this for a little bit longer because I think that edge has been used well beyond how long it should be used for. I'd say that plane in a way doesn't look like it's ever really seen much use. And on cost it really varies you get some people I think can pick up good tools for maybe a pound, pound fifty and I think for a good second hand one you pay as much as maybe 40 to 50 pounds I think any more than that is not really worth your while I think it's too much once it gets to that level because the reality is you know I'm having to buy some abrasive here and the tile and various other bits but what is nice about those items is that you can use them for other tools you might choose to restore so they do have an ongoing use Okay, I've got a nice burr all the way along the edge there. So again, down. 
not to remove that. Yeah, just taking a little bit longer because this is new to me. So I make sure I'm doing everything thoroughly. So yeah, that's the burr gone. That's come away really nicely. Let's move that over there. Get some of my metal polish. And always making sure we slide that way and never back. You've got a nice sharp edge there now. I take good care of that one. Okay. So we're just going to take a look at the cap iron here as well. And what we're looking for is we want that one to meet very neatly with the edge under there. And this one might just do that one anyway, but all I'm going to do is just rest it here. I'll just take out that screw and just undercut that front edge a little bit and the cap line is super soft metal it'll cut very very quickly I'm happy that's going all the way across. And polish the front edge of it up. It's not to say we won't find a problem, but that initially seems pretty good. Here's another big advantage for me anyway over the modern interpretations of the bedrock is the cap iron screw. Doesn't sound like much, but I think they missed a trick here. You can see with the Stanleys, these are quite thick and they've got lovely slots on the side of them so it's really easy to get your fingers exactly where they need to be, get to where you want to be and to then just dial in a bit of pressure. Whereas on the modern bed rocks, this is quite thin and it's very difficult to apply much torque. So I think that's another win for the Stanley there. So the lateral adjuster lever I think is a win on these older Baileys. And I think that screw also is a big improvement. So then, let's take a look at... Just popping this back in. It feels like it's just about right. Okay. Back that iron out. I'm going to make sure that iron is completely out of the way. Okay, so let's bring you back over here. Now, if anybody's into their engineering and they're watching this, they're going to cringe a bit because I don't really know what I'm doing with engineering and using distance gauges or feeler gauges isn't really my thing. But that's within the tolerances of what you would expect from a modern plane. So we don't have to use this abrasive surface. We can just go straight to using the plane and seeing how it performs. That's what we'll do. Okay, so we pop this out of the way. It's typical, sometimes things go better than expected. So what we'll do is we'll take the joke wood first. And when I mean joke, I mean 
by picking something like pine to demonstrate a tool on is about as much use as a chocolate teapot because if you know what you're doing if you can't get a decent shaving from a piece of pine then it's not really worth it that's just a tea light um you know there's other ways to lubricate the sole of a plane but if you've got something like a bit of wax hanging about probably make things easier and again this isn't going to be about the setup of a plane particularly but what you do is just you look down the end, you use that lever, move it side to side, get the setting where you want, back it off a bit so it's not cutting, and then slowly advance it. That's taken off very, very clean shavings, which is completely expected. So lovely and clean, it's like glass. Really, really lovely finish. Okay. So we'll try and step it up a little bit and try something that isn't necessarily a joke timber. It's still pretty mild and pretty easy going. got a much thicker and wider piece of cherry in this instance which is a decent enough hardwood and the back the iron off and just slowly wind it out as you can see Taking off nice clean shavings, and what is most important is that removing any marks left by any machinery that might have been used, or marks from a trying plane. Now we've got a lovely bright finish. It's very reflective, it's not torn or there's no defects. Probably if you take away my chitter chatter, that was about 15 minutes work, which I think is completely reasonable. And certainly with the steps that some people take with vintage tools, uh, with modern tools, that's quite reasonable. You know, 15 minutes of your time. Yes, you've got to spend out for a few things, but I didn't really need to do hardly anything, it was just a case of sharpening the iron on that one. So, let's take a look at the next one. And I don't want this video to seem like I'm hating on modern manufacturers, because to be quite frank, without their contribution, we'd all be much the poorer. I think what I like about these planes is I'm very used to them. I think they offer tremendous value for somebody wanting to get started. And they're one of my preferred smoother tombs. Whoa, we've got in here like a whole rabbit hutch. But to be fair, at least that means the tools can be pretty well protected. I would hope. 
Yeah. Must have done a nice job there. Thank you. So this is a record. Record is basically just a complete copy of Stanley. There's no real appreciable differences. You might go to find people online that are going to tell you that's maybe fractionally better, but I don't see it, not really. So what we'll do is we'll bring out the amateur engineering tools just while this is clear. Take our feeler gauge, which matches the 1.5 thousandths of an inch tolerance that is talked about with a modern plane. Let's see where we're at. Okay, well, I've had the force in a little bit. What have we got? So behind the mouth there, maybe a little. Well, behind the mouth is fine. No, I can't sensibly get that in, you know. Yeah, I can feel resistance on there when I'm lifting it about. You know, I'm sure someone would tell me I'm not doing that particularly well, but I think you know when a distance gauge or a feeler gauge slips in easily. So we'll go back to the starting point. And here we go. This one's going to take a bit longer. So the nice thing is this one, it looks a bit more beat up than the Stanley, but it's still okay. The main thing we've got against us here, and this is, can be one of the frustrations when you buy something that's second hand, it's going to take some of your time. Is this plain iron, looks like it's set not for smoothing, but that looks like it's like a heavy removal jack plane kind of thing. And also, there's like, feels like quite a heavy back bevel put on that one as well. So I'm going to give that a little go. See if we can just improve on it a bit. And that's where eventually something like a grinder, especially again if you're using woodworking tools, a grinder can be very, very useful. It might be able to help you out. So again, great example. Do your homework. You know, if an eBay seller hasn't shown you the picture of the iron, maybe ask for one, you know? And if they can't be bothered, literally, there, there's so many number fours made because they were such popular plans that you won't have any problem finding another one, just move along. And if, you know, you pay an extra five pounds for a picture of a blade that looks like it's in good order, then happy days. So I'm going to use the honing guide here because with something that's stuck out of whack, I'm going to... Um, Try and just turn the brain off a little bit and um, just have at it. Okay. So what I'm not going to do with this one, I'm going to see if I can shortcut it for the sake of this video a little bit, is if I had a power grinder to show you, and I will do so in the future, what I could do is easily grind it all back at 25 degrees and then put my secondary bevel on. But the, so the other advantage of these irons is because they're quite thin compared to a lot of the modern irons, it is possible to maintain just a single bevel. So I've shot this up straight to 30, and this is a 120 grit um, abrasive. And this homing guide and a long stretch of abrasive Give me a really good, generous go. Try and bring it back to where I want it to be. I've got a 
M-Class vacuum cleaner as well because I'm quite into my woodwork. So I wouldn't recommend using a domestic vac, but um, I don't like getting particles in the air. So I'm just going to clean that up. You can see, even though that was a bit of a nuisance, we're nearly all the way across. It's not going to take too much longer. And that's just taken one strip of abrasive. I can nearly feel a burr all the way over. And still watch your fingers. Don't be uncontrolled with this. Take your time. And this is 120 grit paper, to be quite honest. I had a roll of 80 grit as well. I have no idea where that went. I think I might have used it all. And for tool restoration, like flattening soles, grinding a bevel, 80 grit is far superior. I'm just going to clean that off. Okay, so now I'm straight across, all the way from edge to edge, which is good. Again, with this one, if it wasn't for the sake of this video, I would take longer getting that one to exactly where it needs to be. I might just choose to work the back a little bit here as well. plane showing that much wear yeah take a look we've got a bit nicks and bumps in the cap iron now so what I'm going to do with that is just follow the natural curvature so with this kind of motion It's pretty good. Anything we're just going to go just undercut it a little bit. Okay, with this one being a bit of old and damaged, you can kind of see there that nice bright strip I've got running over it now. So back to honing again. So definitely with this plane, with the damage that's on the back of it, a grinder would have been nice, but you can also see that with a honing guide and some abrasive, it doesn't take too long to do it that way. And if you're worried about overheating your tools, that's a pretty cheap and cheerful way of doing it. Tricky for me here, it's a bit different than my normal procedure because you expect to find your primary bevel lower, but that's yeah, that's my 30, so that's what I'll work with. And like I said, these um plane irons being so thin, you can maintain the whole bevel. It's not that much work because they're so thin. If you've got a modern high-end plane, you're gonna find that a lot more difficult because the the iron tends to be a lot harder. You've got your things like your a2 cryogenically treated, PMV11 from Veritas, cryogenic 01 from people like Clifton, and 
you know, other things as well, so it, it can take a bit longer to deal with. Okay, so I've got a good burr there. What I'm going to do is really put a bit of bias there and I'm not using what a lot of people might be familiar with called the ruler trick, which is lifting it up, but just putting that pressure right behind the cutting edge and effectively lifting it just a touch, but by a barely perceptible amount. A bit more burr there. got something that's a bit of a tricky shape something like a block of wood or a strop that's able to deform a bit can help you just chase off those last remnants of a burr which can be really useful we've got something there now that I'm hoping even though it's a far from perfect iron we'll be able to do some work like I said if I had some more time but I wanted this to be realistic in terms of what you might find from eBay or your boot sales all those kind of places. When you're setting your cap iron, just when you're learning to plane, don't overthink it. You can come back to about 1.5 mil, something like that, back from the edge, ought to be plenty. Okay, so that's that done. Take a look at the plane again. That's really nicely positioned in here. All fits well. Whoever's owned this plane, apart from having it set for heavy stock removal, which is fine, um, owner was able to do whatever they want with it. It all seems quite good. Actually, it looks like someone's tried to do some dreadful plane tune-up, maybe based on watching some kind of YouTube video where they were told that all of this surface is a bearing surface. It's complete rubbish it's not a bearing surface the only place the plane iron will touch is here at the top and down at the bottom it might have been just plain movement but it looks like someone's gone and there was some abrasive there's a bit more tension than that usually it's a case of just getting the the right feel on that lateral adjuster arm. Yeah, it's in there nicely. That's more like it. Yeah. Yeah, that's what we want. You'd need to feel that little bit of resistance there. If it's flopping around too much, as soon as it starts banging into the wood, it's um it's not gonna play ball for you. Again, there aren't any perfect ways to describe how to achieve that. You've just got to be prepared to mess around with it until you get it just right. So again, we'll go for the easy stuff first. The joke wood. Like I said, if you can't plane long grain pine with any kind of plane, then 
Something seriously wrong with it. So I advance the iron, get it all set up with a lateral adjustment lever, and just back it right out. So there's nothing cutting. And then just slowly advance it. This is what's magic about these rather than having some kind of a Norris adjuster. And there we go. Fine, really glassy smooth, beautiful, no problem there at all. And then we'll get our stick of cherry. Again, different wood, different characteristics, so we'll just back the iron off a little bit. adjust it for what we want and that's what's so good about these planes you know you can just back it off a touch oh, look at that beautiful when you saw the state of that iron okay Sort of how bad it is and how much extra work it could benefit from but it's doing wonders okay you saw how much of a mess that frog face was in right no problem all right so that's two down let's see how we're doing for time okay so 37 that will need up a bit of time because the iron was a bit rough and ready and again i would say if i wanted to get that one for my own personal toolbox, I'll take a little longer with it and just get it really, really nice on that plain iron. So yeah, again, I'm not hating on any of those premium tool brands at all. They make all really good quality stuff. I just think it can be useful to have your money put aside for other things sometimes stuff from those tool brands um like a router plane for instance i wouldn't really advocate buying a stanley record plane these days because they're so expensive for me the best router plane out there at the minute is the veritas just because it's from my perspective it's in my country it's about i think 70 100 pounds cheaper than the lee nielsen um, and if you only want to do rough work you can pick up just the old wooden hand routers off of eBay for not a great deal, you know. Save it for those more complicated tools. Wow! Oh, oh. forgot I got this bad boy. So, um, yeah, this was something I got on a complete whim. You don't see many of them in this country, and there's a UK seller. He was selling a number six and a number four. Um, the Miller's Falls are a bit more unusual looking. Um, they've got like a two-piece lever cap. You can see there, which exerts pressure down a bit lower. And this thing looks like it's nearly new. Again, with my stuff, I don't pay over the odds for it. This would have been very cheap and cheerful. Um, the whole deal was with these, I believe, is it put more pressure supposedly near the front. But from my perspective, I think it was all just, you know, marketing guff like most things are um so again we'll take a quick look at how flat this all may or may not be and again if you're an engineer look away now and you can hear that resistance perfectly fine Perfectly fine. So it does feel lighter, just out of interest, comparing it to the UK-made Stanley. 
You can see the castings are a lot thinner on that Miller's Falls than it is on the Stanley, so that Miller's Falls does feel a little bit lighter. Again, so it's quite nice in a way. I've had a record, again, which I would say has got a casting thickness which is between the two actually, but don't worry about any of that kind of guff, all right? It's, it's utter nonsense. Again, I would say the nice thing about whether it's a Miller's Falls record, um, you know, whatever it might be, the whole deal is the condition, you know? Depends, if you want to collect these things, that's a whole different matter. If you just want to use them. Okay, so here I've got that step back. A fair play to Miller's Falls, they didn't just copy Stanley, which is what Record did. You know, you look at Record plane and you can bolt it onto another. You look at these and they are significantly different on the casting and frog. But it does it does work exactly the same. So I'm just advancing that. Just so it's level with the back of the mouth. And the casting are feeling flush. And you've got tolerance on the screws there, so you can do your final fit with your fingers. And then just gently, again, because this is all in cast, you don't have to go crazy. Do the screws up. It's a really nice plane. I don't know whether it's me just finding something that I forgot I even ordered. <laughs> or the fact that it's a bit rare, or the condition is so good. Maybe it's a bit of all three. So again, I've got basically a new iron there. Someone's used it maybe a handful of times. You can see there that I've got my 25 degree on there, a couple of honings. So bottom's flat, don't have to worry about that. Just check the cap iron. I might just take that one out and just do a quick undercut on it to make sure it's meeting nicely. Typical, you make the effort to buy something like that and you barely need it, but at least it was a good demo to show maybe what you need to do some grinding by hand in a really low risk way. Again, cap iron, perfect. You know, a lot of people deride these cheap pressed ones, but they're perfect. They really are perfect. They do the job absolutely fine, okay? Um, you don't have to worry about having great big thick ones. It doesn't make any difference. Um, not in a measurable, sensible way, I don't think. Again, feel free to shoot me down. Yeah, I say the plain iron on this one feels quite thin. Feels a little bit thinner than maybe the record or the Stanley. But I don't imagine that's going to make a blind bit of difference. And I'd say, look at it, the tool's nice, but I wouldn't say it's. You know, I wouldn't be making an effort to buy that over anything else. I think, as a collector, it might be fun to have that particular one. But I can't see there's any performance advantages. Okay. A little bit longer there, I think. So I think quite often when someone's had it before you, an edge will get used well beyond what it should. And it can take a little while to refresh it. Nice to hear that someone else tried the auto song and liked it. 
Again, you don't have to have it on pine, it'll work just as well on a strop or a piece of plywood, I think the individual used it on. So that's cool. Again, always moving away from the cut edge. I'll just put a bit of polish on the front of that one. Can make any difference, but why the hell not? Okay. I think maybe be able to do that next one just about. I love these lever caps. This design where it's literally a lever. I hate the ones with thumb screw, like thumb wheels on them. We've got to torque it up each time. It's like once this is done, it's set it and forget it. I don't understand why anybody would design a modern plane with a thumb wheel on this lever cap. It's like, why? Why would you do that? The adjuster wheel feels really big on these, which is really, really nice. Okay, came to a setting quick. Back that off. Okay, let's get the crap wood. That's not crap, I love pine, um, but in the context of this. my cap iron setting there. Yeah, smash him. Lovely finish. Just going to back that cap iron off a little bit because a super close setting is great if you've got some nasty grain, but if you don't, it's, um, it's a little bit of a extra resistance as you plane. That bit of sherry. Let's take our tea light, leave the sole a little bit. Doing the business. One thing I'd also recommend doing, again, we've got a bit of time to talk about it, is with the plane, if 
you've got this bit of abrasive set up, holding it up on its edge, just relieving all the edges, perhaps doing a bit of a basic round over everywhere, just to take off any little humps and bumps that might be lurking. Yeah, this is a nice one, I like it. Perfect. Okay, we'll do one more, and then I think my vlog idea of four number fours probably stands up. That is indeed, if I have ordered four number fours, and um, I've not got myself a four and a half tucked away in this box. Very impressive. I get a lot of people say that you know it's a bit of a gamble for me, but uh, most of these people have done a, a great job. Again, you see this. I've got a plane to show you in the future, which I'll show at the end of the video. This isn't one about taking stuff that looks like we found at the bottom of a local swamp and then turning it into a user. There's a definitely a time and a place for that because it's lovely to save things. Again, newish one, so you get that box fresh feeling. <clears throat> Your instruction menu as well, lovely. Something we might look at in the future. Ah, this is good, 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 good. Got something different turning up. So with this one, straight away we've got a loose rear handle. Okay, so first thing you want to do is see if it'll just tighten up. Sometimes it won't. Yeah, this one's going to tighten up fine. Like a dream. Lovely and tight. Sometimes on the knobs and the handles, what can happen is the material can shrink Try and do it up and it just bottoms out. There's a threaded rod in there. Just take it out, trim off a few millimetres, you know, a quarter of an inch, something like that, or an eighth of an inch. Put it back in. It's going to pull it down nice and tight. Feeling the frog. He's a little bit skewed in there, a little bit too far forward for my liking, so I'm just going to slacken that off. you'll notice also that this one has woodwork with some of the finish that's broken down. Again, I'm not going to cover all of that it's for another video. This is just literally the essential parts to make a plane work and to get it going. Okay, so let's take a look at cutting iron. Again, with this one, I think it looks like someone's maintained a single bevel on this one which is fine, there's no problem with that approach. What I might do is just hit it with the home guide. Wow, <laughs> it looks like someone has hit this as well, like a banana. But we'll see if that actually causes any problems or not. I've got a feeling it probably won't, but um, we'll see. Wow, yeah, someone really did just I wonder if it would go back with a bit of gentle persuasion. I know leverage would dictate that using it the, the other way would be better, but um, I don't fancy dealing with it. Oh, it's so soft, it's not a problem. Don't you think I've overcorrected? Hardly perfect, but I don't think that's going to be a problem. Okay, so I'm going to get set up. Be 
use some fresh abrasive this time. Here's an example of how somebody might have had some problems. I've gone straight to 30 and you can see that that's working on the heel of the bevel here, not near the tip. So what's happening there is that this has been sharpened far too steeply. And what happens when you do that is the plane will lose clearance in the cut, which is something we'll come on to discuss at some point. Is it 30 to 35, it is, it's between those angles is your sweet spot. If you go above that, the plane really won't want to cut. It might do a couple of passes, but as soon as a bit of wear comes in, you've pretty much had it. As soon as you get close it takes even longer because you're dealing with more and more metal. It's surprising how hot they can get. I can feel it in my fingers. We'll just take a look at the cap iron. A little bit ragged on the edge there, so we'll just tidy up on that. Again, lovely one part lever arrangement. You can see there that the thumb the wheel on these slightly later stand. These again has turned into a different material, not the brass, but it um, doesn't make a blow bit of difference as to how the tool works. Okay, that's cooled off nicely. Get a little pot of water would be useful. shows a good way to reset as well if your honing and sharpening has got a little bit awry. Have a fresh grind, you have to reset you to get you back where you want to be. I'm just going to clean off some of this abrasive.
certainly had my value out of those couple of bits of sandpaper. Okay, it's pretty good now. Get some honing done. Okay, so we're an hour in. That's not too bad. That's so far working into about 15 minutes of play, very roughly, unless the sole of this one needs some real corrective work, which who knows it might. back of the plane iron will just get better and better the more you chase that off you know you can spend a long time from the get-go if you want but I soon lose interest with that kind of thing the more you use it the better it gets and that's the whole deal if you actually start making some things you'll be sharpening frequently and the plane iron just gets better and better I wouldn't enjoy a day where I went to learn how to do this stuff and someone said right okay what we're going to do is polish the back of the plane iron. It's like, no, I could use some of my time. Okay, that's good. So we should be sharp, which is always a huge part of it. Let's get rid of these clamps because we're finished with them there. crazy tight on the cap iron settings that's a whole video within itself just something in that region is fine you don't want too much resistance something like a mil mil and a half no problem at all because what that's there for is its primary function was always to make the plane more versatile and to reduce tear out but once combined with the adjusters that you get on a Bailey style plane it also contains this Y lever type affair which regulates the depth. There we go, in nice and even. And even adjusting that screw, um, the lever cap screw, on a modern plane, it's not necessarily going to come shipped to you with the perfect setting it might have got knocked around in transit. So you need to think about that a little bit. So, time for DIY. Check the sole is flat. force it I can get it just about underneath but let's see in the real world so remember we're talking about 0, 0.03 or 4 of a millimeter or you know 1.5 thousandths of an inch 
pretty sure Chippendale and his crew in the 18th century weren't using language like that. It was a bit more nuanced and that's why woodwork intends to be a craft rather than a, an engineering pursuit. Nothing wrong with engineering. God, without engineers where would we be? But it's just, you know, horses for courses. Right, just to finish up, let's make sure you get a good view of the Hollywood shavings, right? Who doesn't like Hollywood shavings? surprise. Again, a piece of hardwood, something that makes beautiful furniture. Just back the iron off so we're not going to get caught with a nasty surprise. And we'll add a little bit of that tea light wax. Not because that's a genius move, it's just some people might have that already hanging about. So that's our four number fours, two Stanleys, a record, and a Miller's Falls, all done within, let's say an hour, because I must have chin wagged for about eight minutes, shall we? Let's go easy on me. And I had to open the boxes as well. And these represent planes that you can find anywhere. You know, Miller's Falls, available, more in the US. Don't stress about finding one on purpose. Quite like the ergonomics on that, but, you know, record. Loads of those in the UK. Stanley's. The OG. So, it's all there. Really strongly consider it. You know, you don't have to. You know, spend your own money on what you want to spend your own money on. But, you can prepare hardwoods, softwoods. You've got a great smoother there. And... None of them were out of tolerance any worse than modern premium planes are sold at. None of them. Are those four. The odd ones, the only ones I do find is if I draw in the air for you, I use one of these, I sometimes find that the sole is slightly hollowed from the factory and somebody's never corrected it. That's the only thing I've ever found and that's why I got that tile. But Interesting, the only reason I needed that tile was because these nearly always get used and that's the only part that really showed the abuse along with the with the cap iron. But none of it was difficult to resolve. Perfect. Really think about it. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you've got any questions, just shoot them down in the comments and um, yeah, catch up soon.